Gracias, Señor, por tu fidelidad. As I was uh, going over my notes, mientras estaba preparando las notas para esta noche, estaba uh, meditando en una escritura, I was meditating on a, on a passage of scripture, and as I was reading it, mientras estaba leyendo, then a couple of tears came out, un par de lágrimas me salieron, because as I was reading, mientras estaba leyendo, in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, where he talks about the cloud of witnesses in Hebreos capítulo 12, donde dice que estamos rodeados de, de una nube, verdad, de, de, de testigos, de héroes particularmente. And uh, as I was uh, reading the, the different uh, uh, people that he mentions, mientras estaba leyendo las diferentes personas que uh, se mencionan ahí, como Abel, Uh, Enoch, Elijah, Noah, Moses, Abraham, Isaac. And, uh, of course, la Biblia menciona algo específico acerca de cada uno de ellos. And then I added, y luego yo le agregué, le puse Joe Lugo. I don't know how many of you were here last night. Yo no sé cuántos de ustedes estuvieron aquí anoche, but, uh, but we honor a soldier of the Lord last night. Honramos a un soldado del Señor y... Uh, I'm going to dare to say, because of the testimonies, voy a atreverme a decir, por los testimonios que estábamos escuchando de, de, de sus hijos y su familia, from his uh, children and from his family, that uh, he, he left a pretty uh, impressive legacy. He left a pretty impressive life. Dejó un legado muy este, uh, impresionante. Uh, and I'm here as a witness, estoy como testigo de que Joe Lugo was my friend. I talked to him many, many times. Muchas veces hablé con él. And we connected over 20, 25 years ago in uh, one of the first men's retreats that I attended. El primer retiro de hombres me tocó estar en el mismo cuarto con él. And uh, we were able to share our lives. And ever since then, we stay connected every year, cada cada año y, y siempre. We, we talked uh, very, very frequently. Hablamos bien, bien seguido. Este, so, uh, the different people that it mentions here, it talks about the individual things that they did. Cada uh, cosa que hicieron. And my question to you tonight, mi pregunta hacia ti en esta noche es, do you have any idea? ¿Tienes una idea del de legado que vas a dejar a tu familia? What kind of legacy are you going to leave your family? See, it's one thing whenever you're alive, cuando estás vivo, uh, you know, people know you by certain things or ways or attitudes, customs, culture, whatever. Te, la gente te mira y te recuerda por diferentes actitudes, culturas, costumbres, ¿verdad? ¿Qué, qué haces? But, but once you're not here, pero cuando ya no estás, uh, I wonder what are you going to be remembered by? ¿De qué manera vas a ser recordado? You go to the cemeteries, vas al cementerio, and you look at some of the... The, uh, the, the stones that are there, mira las piedras que usan para cubrir, ¿verdad? Las, uh, los sepulcros, and then there's a message there. Hay un mensaje ahí. Aparte del nombre, besides the name, you can see, he was born on this day y falleció en esta fecha. Nació y falleció. Y en las ocasiones dice, he loved his wife. Amó a su esposa. Or he was a family man, etc., etc., etc. Do you know what are you going to be remembered by? What would you like to be remembered by? ¿Sabes cómo te van a recordar? ¿Cómo te gustaría que te recordaran? Boy, you got really quiet. What happened? Did I say a bad word? Dije alguna mala palabra? Because that's, that's something that we need to start working on it today. No mañana. No, no. Necesitamos empezar a trabajar en eso desde hoy. What do you say we start today? ¿Cómo ves si lo hacemos ahora? Amen? And one way that we can start, una manera que podemos empezar is by having a grateful heart. Number one, Carlos Pérez. Tener un corazón agradecido. Do we even know what that means? ¿Sabemos? ¿Tenemos una idea lo que esto quiere decir? Anybody? We were just singing a couple of songs. Cantamos un par de cantos que hablaba acerca de dar gracias. Do you remember them? Why are you so quiet? We're going to get out of here in a few minutes. Ahorita vamos a salir, les prometo. No, no los voy a dejar mucho, mucho tiempo porque yo también tengo hambre. I'm hungry también. Okay. okay, so, <coughs> to, uh, to be able to expound on what we're going to talk about tonight para poder explicar lo que voy a hablar en esta noche, en el libro de Lucas, el capítulo 17, in the book of Luke, chapter 17, 
Beginning with verses 11 through 19, del verso 11 al 19, it relates a story about 10 lepers. Relata una historia acerca de 10 leprosos. I'm sure you've read it a time or two, and I hope that you remember what happened. Ojalá que se acuerden de lo que pasó. But there's few things that, that jumped out of me as I was uh, reading and meditating on that. Había unas cosas que brincaron ahí inmediatamente. Number one, it says that Jesus was walking by, iba por ahí for, uh, uh, por Samaria y Galilea. Okay, estaba caminando por esos lugares. And if you remember uh, the, the history during the time, la historia durante ese tiempo, it's either you were a Jew or you were a pagan. Hello? O, o, o eras un judío o eras un pagano. O servías a Dios o no servías a Dios. Tenías tu religión o no tenías tu religión. You either had a religion or not. Amen. So if you were a Samaritan, you know, you were considered a, a pagan. You know, an, an enemy of the Jews, un enemigo de los judíos. So it says that Jesus was walking through Samaria. Iba caminando a través de Samaria. Amen. Y dice que mientras estaba caminando and as he was walking through there, he had a similar situation like we had three years ago. Tuvo una experiencia parecida como la que tuvimos aquí, no tan solamente en Laredo, sino, ¿sabes qué? En todo el mundo. He didn't just have an experience that just happened in the, in the city of Samaria or Galilee, but something that happened worldwide. Do you remember what happened a few years ago? ¿Qué fue lo que pasó? COVID. I mean, it just shut everything down. Se paró todo. Amen. And I lost loved ones. Yo perdí seres queridos, familiares, amistades, and I'm sure you did too. Amen. But what made it really, really hard, algo que lo hizo bien difícil, is whenever they got sick and were sent to the hospital, cuando se enfermaron y los mandaron para el hospital, I mean, usually you want to be with your family, with your loved one, you know, with your friend. You want to visit them uh, at the hospital. Quieres ir a visitarlos. Pero no se podía. I mean, even if you had the whole, you know, <laughs> the whole gear, you were still not allowed. No te permitían que entraras, okay? I mean, there was a complete separation, completamente. And then what happened, you know, your family member passed away. You weren't even there. Falleció y ni siquiera estabas ahí. Amen? You remember that? Did you participate in that? Where you, you know, you have relatives, family members, etc.? Yo creo que todos, uh, we had a taste of that. Tuvimos, you know, una probada de eso. Well, we don't hear very much about leprosy nowadays. No se oye muy seguido acerca de la lepra. But just, just so that we can, you know, kind of bring it home, okay? COVID was not leprosy, okay? But it was similar because we were separated, porque estaban separados. Well, these 10 lepers, the Bible says, that they were on the outskirts. El lugar donde ellos vivían era afuera de la ciudad. So can you imagine if these people had, had spouses? ¿Te puedes imaginar si estas personas estaban casados y tenían sus esposas? No podían estar con su esposa. You know, they could not be with their spouse. If they had children, they could not be with their children. They could not hug them. They could not carry them. They could not feed them. No podían estar con sus hijos. No los podían cargar. No los podían dar alimentos. They couldn't even go to work. No podían ir a trabajar. They had to be completely covered. Tenían que estar completamente cubiertos so that they wouldn't, you know, contaminar a los demás. They wouldn't, you know, contaminate everybody else. So, so that was the scene, you know, just like the hospitals here. I mean, you're, you're isolated, okay? You're like, like you're COVID, okay, you're this half of the hospital, okay? Tú estás en esta mitad. Si tienes cualquier otra cosa, then you're on this side, okay? But for some reason, the majority... They all had COVID. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, it's another topic. But, pero sabes qué? Este, lo que está pasando aquí, what is happening here in this passage, is that Jesus is walking, and somehow the lepers found out that it was Jesus that was going by. Se dieron cuenta que era Jesús que estaba pasando por ahí. And even though it doesn't say how far he was walking, aunque no decía qué tan retirado estaba, one of the things that it says is that he was, he was way out there. And then in exclamation points on one of the verses, it says, and they yelled, Jesus! Yeah, because that's because that's he was far. I don't think he was like sitting right here. I think he was way over there. Lo dije fuerte porque yo creo que estaba retirado. Amen. Jesus! Para que lo oyera. So Jesus is walking, you know, and then he turns. ¿Qué pasó? I heard my name. 
I'm paraphrasing a little bit, okay? This is your homework. Luke 17, 11 to 19. Se para and... ¿Qué pasó? And he gives them very specific instructions. Le dio unas instrucciones bien, bien específicas. Amen? And one of the things that happened when somebody had a disease like this, and they were, you know, overcoming something like that, they were supposed, they were supposed to go before the priest. Cuando alguien tenía una enfermedad así y empezaba a cambiar la situación, tenían que ir delante del sacerdote para enseñar que, hey, look, look, you know, I don't have cancer anymore. Yeah, I, my skin is coming back. You know, my, and like, and like, and like, I'm okay. That was the custom. Esa era la costumbre. Eso era lo que tenían que hacer. So Jesus said, go and show yourselves to the priest. Ve y estén delante del sacerdote. Well, I don't think that's what they wanted to hear. Yo creo que eso no era lo que ellos querían oír. Because if you go back and read, you can see that Jesus was laying hands. Jesús ponía manos, or he would speak to them. On some of them, he was spitting on them. Uno les escupía, and he was healing them left and right. Y los estaba sanando. So, so I think that they were probably expecting something like that. But nevertheless, ¿sabes qué? Esperaban algo así. Pero ¿sabes qué? No fue eso lo que hicieron. He said that as soon as they heard, mientras oyeron eso, and this is lesson number one for tonight. We need to listen specifically to what the Word of God says. Necesitamos escuchar específicamente y claramente qué es lo que nos dice la Palabra de Dios que debemos de hacer. Because we miss it so many times. Le fallamos tantas veces. Well, I already prayed, Pastor no, nothing happened. Ya oré y no pasó nada. Okay. <laughs> Did you check your backyard? <laughs> Checaste tú <laughs> lo, lo que tenemos atrás. See, we want to, well, I'm going to talk about that right now. But anyway, uh, <coughs> he told them to go and present themselves before the priest. Vayan y preséntese delante del sacerdote. It says that immediately they started walking in that direction. Mientras estaban caminando, listen, listen, ¿están oyendo? Les dijo, tienen que ir, and they started walking in that direction. How many were they? ¿Cuántos eran? How many? Ten. ¿En español? Diez. diez. Okay. Eran diez leprosos. So what happened? As they were walking towards the city, cuando iban caminando hacia la ciudad, dice que se dieron cuenta. All of a sudden, like, like they noticed that they got healed. Se dieron cuenta que fueron sanados. At least it says, uno de ellos se dio cuenta. ¿Sí? But in reality, todos fueron sanados al mismo tiempo. All ten of them got healed at the same time. But it says that one of them, like, what is happening? Oh, my God, something, oh, algo pasó, algo pasó. And it says that he started, number one, praising God. When you have an encounter with the Lord, I mean, what stops you? Cuando tienes un encuentro con el Señor, ¿qué te detiene de alabar al Señor? De rentirte delante del Señor. Hello, what is stopping you from doing that? What is stopping us from doing that? ¿Qué es lo que nos está deteniendo? Why don't we show the picture, Carlos, por favor? <coughs> Esto es más o menos la, la, la imagen que, que pasó. You see the nine guys are over there? This is more or less what happened. And you see this one guy. But when I read the scripture, cuando leo la escritura... It says that he turned around, se volteó, and he came before the presence of the Lord. Vino delante de la presencia del Señor. And he didn't just got on his knees. No nomás se hincó. Amen. And one of the greatest signs of humility and humbleness, una de las maneras más impresionantes que una persona se puede humillar, es arrodillarte. Amen. <laughs> But if you really want to take it to the next level, si en realidad lo quieres llevar al otro nivel. And I don't know why we don't do that. Y no sé por qué no lo hacemos. It says that there was so much gratitude on this one man. Había tanta gratitud en esta persona en particular. That he didn't just get on his knees. No tan solamente se arrodilló. It's the Bible says that he got on his face on the floor. You want to see a demonstration of that? Okay, let's come and do it. Ah, no, no, no. This is, this. <laughs> well, did you jump low, Lego? Uh, uh, you want to do it? <laughs> no, it says that he got on his face. Yeah. 
Help. Help. I need help getting up. I'm okay. I'm okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that was extra, okay? That was extra. You're not gonna you're not gonna get charged for that. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I'm trying to make a point here. This is serious business. This is serio, okay? It's no wonder that the word of God says no no es nada chistoso que la palabra de Dios dice. Do you want to talk to God? Quieres hablar con Dios? You, you go into your closet and do personal warfare. Y haz la guerra espiritual personal. Amen. That way nobody is watching. Nobody hears. It's just you and God. Nada más tú y Dios. And you can see this guy meant business. Okay. So talking about a grateful heart. Hablando acerca de un corazón que agradecido. As he's doing this, mientras él está haciendo eso, Jesus said, hey, weren't there ten of you? ¿Que no eran diez? Yeah. ¿Y no sanaron los otros? Were, were the other one healed? Well, yes. Well, where are the other nine? ¿Dónde están los otros nueve? They were probably super excited. Amen. That they couldn't wait to get home. Embrace their families. Go to work. Get on Facebook. You start texting. You know. And get in social media. Y estaban tan emocionados que querían regresar a su casa a ver a su familia. Y meterse en Facebook a ver cuántos likes tenían. Y todas esas cosas. Hello. Well, that's what we do all day. I, sorry, I, I, I was not planning on saying that. I just, it just came out. I don't know why it came out. But yes, yes. I mean, it's like God answers us. Dios te, te, te contesta. And it's like, oh, okay, all right. And we just go on like, like nothing, like nothing, you know. I told Sister Kim that I was going to use her as an example. I told Sister Kim that I was going to use her as an example. You can say right there. But you know, there's, there, there's, so many, there's so many ways to pray. Hay tantas maneras de orar. And I'm sure that you have heard her pray. Yo estoy seguro que la has oído a orar. But uh, I've been walking with the Lord for a few years, and I don't remember hearing anybody pray like, like she begins to pray. No me acuerdo a otras personas orar como ella ora. Have any of you have heard her pray? ¿Las han oído? This is a test, okay? This is a, a ver, what does she say? What is her first and second word 99% of the time? What? What's that? <laughs> oh, are you guessing or, or you I thank you and I praise you. Is that not right? I thank you and I praise you. I thank you and I praise you. I thank you and I, it's like I keep hearing that over and over and over. You go, what's wrong with her? That's a sign of a grateful heart. Es una señal de un corazón agradecido. And that's the message for tonight. Un corazón agradecido. Let's see the other slide, please. The verse. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and 18. Primera de Thessalonians 5, 18 dice así. Give thanks in what? All circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. En español dice dar gracias. ¿En qué? I, I, I didn't, I didn't no, no, no. ¿En qué? En my, my, my. En todo, porque esta es la voluntad de Dios para con vosotros en Cristo Jesús. See, we're, we're missing one word in English, por eso quería verla los dos. That's why I wanted to see it. Can you see the word that is not there? It's in English, but it's not in Spanish. What's that? Do you see how the punchline is different? ¿Te das cuenta cómo es diferente? Because whenever you read the word circumstances, cuando miras la palabra circunstancias, you know, you pause and consider, okay, what is exactly that I am going through? ¿Qué es lo que está pasando? What am I supposed to give thanks? ¿Por qué es por lo que debo de dar gracias? Because when you hear or say all things, it's like, uh, you know, sometimes we get, you know, people to ask for prayer. You know, vienen y pray for me, brother. And 
What do you want me to pray for? Oh, the Lord knows. Okay. <laughs> so how are you going to know if you get it or not? <laughs> so como te vas a cuenta? But we love you and we still pray for you. And if that's how you feel comfortable, we're still going to continue to do that. Lo vamos a seguir haciendo. But there's something about being very specific. There's something about being very specific. Amen. Uh, I was rejoicing when you were saying those testimonies. Mientras estabas compartiendo los testimonios de how, you know, it started at 35,000 and we're down to <laughs> close to 10, 11, 12. I mean, 35,000 was about a week ago, you know. I wonder, I wonder, me pregunto, me pregunto, y no hace como una semana faltaban 35 y ya son como 11 o 12. I wonder what happened. So what happened during these last few days? ¿Qué fue lo que pasó durante estos? Eh? Well, the men were not here. Most of the men were not here. <laughs> so maybe, a lo mejor que necesitamos viajar más seguido. <laughs> hey, but guess what? There were other men here and other families here. Había otros hombres y otras familias aquí. And you know that the word of God says, ¿sabes que la palabra de Dios dice? Give, give, and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Dar y se os dará. Medida buena, rebosando, os darán. Amen? So what else did we do this weekend? ¿Qué fue otra cosa que hicimos? Well, number one, we invested into our spiritual life. Invertimos en nuestra vida espiritual. But guess what? A team from this church went to minister to Rio Bravo, and church on 59, fueron, and we fed them their Thanksgiving dinner, and we ministered the word, y compartimos la palabra. A team from here went to minister over there. So we went to do what? We went to give. We went to plant some seeds. Amen? Fuimos a plantar semilla, and there's no doubt in my heart, Pastor Norman, no hay duda en mi corazón. Amen? That... As we do what the Bible says we should do, mientras hacemos lo que dice la palabra de Dios que debemos de hacer, well, what is God going to do? Give, and it shall be given. <laughs> Good measure, press down, shaken together. And I'm believing that before the week, we're going to have that, brother. We're going to have that running over, running over. Amen? And if you want to participate, y si quieres participar en esto, hey, this is good ground. This is good ground. This is solid ground. Amen? Okay, I think I'm going to call it a night. I think, <laughs> I think this, is, this is good for tonight. Grateful, grateful heart. Tener un... All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what am I going to do with six minutes? Let me see. <laughs> okay, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. You know, a couple of things that I noticed, un par de cosas. Go back to the verse, brother, the verse uh, 18. Give thanks in all circumstances. Do you know what verse 16 says? ¿Sabes que lo que dice? Not 16, but 17. It says, be unceasing in prayer. Orad sin cesar. Amen. You know, talking about specific instructions, hablando acerca de instrucciones específicas. Just like Jesus gave instructions to the leopards. Now he's giving us specific instructions how to have a grateful heart. Cómo tener un corazón agradecido. Orar sin cesar. Pray without ceasing. And then he says, thank him in everything. <clears throat> and I like this translation, the Amplified. It says, thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstance may be. Be thankful and give thanks. For this is the will of God for you who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. How many times have you asked yourself, ¿cuántas veces te has preguntado? I mean, I would serve God if I knew what his will are, what his will is. Well, did you hear what I just read? ¿Oíste lo que dije? ¿Ves lo que dice ahí? For this is what? God's will. En español. Dad gracias a Dios en todo, sin importar cuál sea la circunstancia, Agradece, da gracias, porque esta es la voluntad de Dios. This, I mean, this is pretty straight and bold, because this 
is the will of God. What is the will of God? To be thankful in all circumstances. Cuando estás bien y cuando está mal. Cuando tienes y cuando no tienes. Whenever you have, whenever you don't have. Whenever you open the refrigerator and there's nothing there. But guess what? Abres el refrigerador y sabes qué? There's always something there. Unless you have some of my grandkids to visit. And some of them are over there. Okay? I'm so proud of my grandkids. I love it. They make my day. Estoy tan orgulloso de ellos y siempre les digo, you know, you want to make me happy? Just come and visit. And I was sharing that with somebody. Estaba diciendo esto a alguien. Dice, pues sí, pues les das de comer. Well, yeah, pues you feed them, man. I don't mind. I know they like it. You guys like the food at the house, right? Yeah. You like the desserts también, right? Yeah. You like visiting Huela? Yeah, they like to see Huela. Yeah, yeah. We had a good time. Yeah. But things are not always good. Things are not always nice. No siempre están las cosas buenas. No siempre está bien. But the Word of God says, thank God in all circumstances. In all circumstances. You know, in todas las circunstancias, when he talks about the, the heroes of the Bible, in, uh, in chapter 11, Hebreos, Hebrew chapter, it says, by faith, Abel did this. By faith, Noah did this. By faith, Moses did this. By faith, Abraham did this. O sea, todo es por fe. And I'm sure you know and you've heard it a thousand times and you know, keep on hearing it. Vas a seguir oyendo. It says, without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Sin fe es imposible agradar a Dios. You want to please God? Do it with your faith. And guess what? ¿Sabes qué? In closing. <clears throat> if it's something that you can see and touch. Hello? Listen. Listen. If it's something that you can see and touch, you don't need faith for that. Did you hear what I said? ¿Oyeron? Si es algo que puedes a tocar or, or taste <laughs> or, or ver, you don't need faith for that because it's there. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. La fe es la substancia. It's like, like the solid thing that you are expecting, but you cannot see. Amen? So that's the language of the Christian. Este es el lenguaje del cristiano. You have children serving the Lord? Probably not. ¿Tienes a, a hijos sirviendo al Señor? A lo mejor que no. Okay? But guess what? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household will be saved. La palabra dice, cree en el Señor Jesucristo y tú y tu casa serán salvos. Or, or sometimes, you know, they're part-time. You know, sometimes they're part-time. But guess what? Before, you know, we finish, antes de terminar, they're going to be full-time. Amen? You know, you see, you see my daughters, you know, ven a mis hijas. Well, I mean, they're a reflection of me. Son, son como yo. Uh, I was used to be like a part-time. I'm a full-time now, okay? And, and some of them, you know, used to be part-timers. And, and I shared that here y lo compartí. And they were here when I was saying that. And they knew I was talking about them. Sabían que estaban hablando de But you know I love them. And they've been dedicated to the Lord and so is their children. So it doesn't matter how far they go. God is there. Amen. God is there. And the seed is in their hearts. And I just love them. I just love them with all my heart, and they belong to the kingdom of God, pertenecen al reino de Dios. Amen? And one of these days, you're going to be taking my place. Van a estar tomando mi lugar. Amen? Some of them already started. Algunos ya empezaron. Amen? I'm so proud of them. I mean, I, I, I look at that row. I mean, I, I remember cuando, whenever they were younger, I mean, we fill up the whole row. Estaba todo. Híjole. I don't want to cry. <coughs> I am so grateful for everything that God has done in my life and in my family. This year, my wife and I completed 46 years of marriage. In a few more months, it's going to be 47. Completamos 46, y unos cuantos meses van a ser 47. And we just used to celebrate, you know, on the anniversary day. But thank God, God has blessed us. Dios nos ha bendecido. So now we get to celebrate like every month or, you know, I mean, <laughs> if we can, we'll do it. <laughs> but out of those 46 years, out of those 46 años, the first five 
were hell on earth. Era el infierno aquí en la tierra. Amen. Yeah, see, I was married, but I was living like I was single, como que si era soltero. <laughs> and uh, we still got one more minute, one more minute. And then, you know, she got tired, and, you know, she started praying for me, and el Señor me trajo. Amen. So that was 41 years ago. Eso hace 41 años. And then, you know when, when Adventure Week started here? You, you, you know when Adventure Week started? Cuando empezó Adventure Week here? 36, mija, ¿cuántos años tienes? 36, 37. 1987, August 1987. That was the first Adventure Week here. My youngest daughter was six months old. Mi hija más chica tenía seis meses, and we came to Church of the Cross. Well, they came first before he was here, antes de estar aquí. And, uh, and they were the ones that dragged us here. Ellas fueron las que nos trajeron. So it's your fault, especially the oldest one. Yeah, because the oldest one said, did she was the one, we were going to the other church, you know. And Leslie said, no, Happy Clown told us we were going to sing. You remember that? You remember that, mija? The happy clown said we're supposed to sing. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness, Father. Thank you for giving us Jesus. Thank you for giving us life. Thank you for giving us health. Thank you for surrounding us, Lord, for such a loving family. Thank you for blessing us, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for being here for us, Lord. Thank you for the family. Thank you for the brethren. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our yes. pastors. Thank you, Lord, for Thank everything, you, Lord, that, that we get to do, Father God. Thank you for allowing us to live yes. here in Laredo, Father God. Yes. Thank you for allowing us to minister to the people around us. Thank you, Lord, for using us, Father God. Thank you for helping us be useful, Father God. Thank you for the team that you've given us, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we don't just thank you. We thank you and we praise you. We thank you and we praise you. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, we love you guys. Thank you for watching. Scan the QR code to get connected. We invite you to leave a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the notification button so you can know when our next video is here.